Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield. You're talking to the biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And he's back. He's causing trouble within seconds of arriving back on the cobbles. Chris Gascoigne, good to talk to you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. Last time I saw you, you were being incredibly creepy in pantomime with Jane McDonald, and you stole the show. You were brilliant. Congratulations. Oh, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> yes, you certainly did. I mean, that was a great role, wasn't it? Because you were able to sort of play up on the back of the Coronation Street thing and come in and just have fun with it. I mean, it's, it's hard work, but it is ultimately just making people have a great Christmas. Yeah, it's, it's the only thing, I, I think, now that we've got left of variety for a family a night out in the theatre. And, you know, and certainly Birmingham. Well, I did Sheffield last year and p- people love them. You know, it's not just kids that go. It's like a, a tradition, you know, you get couples and all sorts there. So, uh, no, I enjoyed it. It's hard work, but I enjoyed it. Birmingham is huge. It doesn't get a bigger stage, a bigger audience oh. and a bigger revenue at the end of the no, year. You're playing to uh, 4,000 people a day there for six weeks, which is a lot. It's a big old auditorium when you step out there, you know. It's, uh, but they were, they were great. It was, it was a great audience. Isn't it interesting, though, that in that entire four, five, six weeks that you were on, it still doesn't compare to one half hour of Coronation Street in terms of audience? I know it's strange, isn't it? You, you, I could do that play for, I could do that play for ten years and still not get the, <laughs> the same audience we get in Coronation Street. So you're back. Let's go back to why you left. You wanted to leave for what reason? Well, I was, I was tired. For one, I'd done seven years on, pretty much full on, uh, nearly every day, learning lines at night, reading scripts at the weekend, and uh, I just needed a break from it really you know and all the all the the peter's drunken stuff and the prison stuff which went on for three months um so i just needed a rest and i needed a, to you know have a refresh and then come back and see where he's at and you know let the writers have a rest from him as well perhaps and what's interesting about you you get to do some proper acting it's not like you're one of the characters that has the knob gags i mean we all love the norrises but they're never gonna throw hard stuff at him because he's the comic relief you really were the backbone of the drama for so long Mentally, how do you cope with that day in and day out? Well, I, I quite clearly didn't towards the end, but uh, no, you, you, you have to be very regimented in what you do. You, you have to make sure that you give yourself a bit of time to, to not look at the lines and, you know, not wake up at three in the morning and keep having a look. Um, but yeah, for, I mean, mentally, I, I, I was really tired. I mean, we're playing 15 episodes all out of order every week. So, you know, you're not only doing the scenes with very little time to do the scenes, we're not even in order. So in in that sense, but, you know, as you get older, you learn to take it easier, not worry so much and just trust that, okay, I I know this scene, I'll just let it play. So I I suppose not to think too much into it, you know, otherwise that that way madness lies. (laughs) So tonight you return to the soap, and we're pleased to see you. You get a mixed reaction from those around you, though, don't you? The street is sort of a little ambivalacious about whether you should be back. Yeah, I know, because they're all so perfect, aren't they? But uh, there you go. Uh, No, I know he's walked... Listen, he always walks into it, and he always has to try and make up to people, and, uh, you know, at least he tries, you know. Um, So so it's not easy when he comes back. There's many obstacles immediately to kind of um, get over over and come to a point where he can start again there. And your little boy is suddenly not a little boy anymore. I notice in this he's almost got a moustache when he greets you. He has got it. He's got a little bum fluff <laughs> tash. I said to him the other day, I'll get a some milk and the cat can lick it off. But uh, I think he's going for a Johnny Depp at the moment. But, uh, but he looks good. I like his tash. But uh, I don't know. I don't know how long it'll last, the tash. But uh, he's, he's, a, he's a great lad. He's, uh, he's really growing up. He's got a deeper voice than me and he's as tall as me now. So... Uh, yeah, time flies. It is incredible. I mean, for you old guys, you come and go and we don't really see a difference <laughs> because you're sort of middle-aged and everything's cool. But, of course, for the kids, they grow up so quickly and you're seeing their life sort of span in front of your eyes. Yeah, well, we did a... When I first came back, before I started filming, actually, we did a, a, a cast photo. And I, I thought, well, you know, all these kids that were just very little or babies when I first started have now, are now stood there with their own kids. You say, what happened to 16 years? 
And then we look at you as an actor. I, I think fundamentally that's what you are. You're not trying to be anything else. I know I spoke to people from the cast last week who have ambition to do other stuff as well. I mean, you are fundamentally an actor, and in this you get to act. I guess for any actor you want to be in work, and that's what this gives you. The downside to that, of course, is that everybody knows you instantly, and as you walk down the street, you can't hide from it. So it's a double-edged sword, Corey, isn't it? It is, it is, but it's also, um, you know, I've got used to that. I, I adjusted to that a long time ago, and I can't really remember my life uh, too much before that. So you get used to that, and people are well-meaning, and most people are okay. We, you probably, you do get hassled, but not as much as sometimes people would think, depending on where you are. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think also it's a great privilege for me to be able to do Coronation Street, to have so many, uh, su such brilliant writing, and me to be able to keep practicing a craft that I love and they pay me for it. And of course, I'll, I'll go off to uh, go and do theatre, which they're very happy for me to do every couple of years. I just did Endgame by Samuel Beckett, which was again, which was brilliant, which I, I learned a lot from and, uh, and I can bring that back to the street and I can try things and so, you know, I'm in a very privileged position and, uh, you know, but you can't have one thing without the other, so. You've come back amidst a storyline that is going to grow and grow. Are you going to have a happy Christmas? That's not far away and I guess very soon you'll be filming that. I doubt it. Well, Barlow's <laughs> Christmas, but you know, we, we do get a half a happy Christmas, but I think it makes people at home feel better when they watch it because they know they're not having as miserable Christmas as the Barlow's. <laughs> so, uh, but I think it's great. I mean, the, the writing has been fantastic and all the run up to Christmas and all the, there's a lot, lot of characters with a lot of secrets here and, and a lot of history and which is brilliant which which Kate seems to be doing is she's getting the drama from the history of the characters which is just brilliant. The ladies do seem to love him I mean the one thing about your character is and I noticed even in this first episode you've got the old guns out again where is the next love interest going to come from I mean Mary's available for example would you be interested? She's too intelligent for Peter <laughs> Mary and uh, well the thing is that there is somebody or they could be somebody, but it's, uh, I, ca I can't tell you any, any more than that, but it's, uh, it, it should be, it will be a big surprise. And it's Blink twice. Gail? Rita? Ah, OK, OK, we'll move on. We won't draw any more attention to this. And in terms of you being back, how long are you back for? I know they're allowed to, they're going to give you breaks and things, which, which is what you want to progress with your theatre career. Sure. What about your future in the show? I think I'll, I'll be there for the foreseeable future. I'm really enjoying it at the moment. And, uh, you know, we just do like, carry on like, like I did before. You know, we, we just... Uh, uh, see what happens and the stories and whether they keep, keep wanting to involve Peter or not and uh, so so just just the, just the same really and then you know it flies by when you're in Coronation Street you know it really does. Were you at this place when you left because I mean obviously you moved out of Granada had you moved into Media City? I did I, I moved into Media City I did the last scene on at Granada on Coronation Street and the first scene in Media City on oh. Coronation Street yeah so that's my claim to fame there, you see. I hope you know how much people love you in this. We all need a lovable bad boy, and you're it right now. I mean, this is something that's gone back centuries with this soap. I hope you enjoy the moment. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you so much. Thank you.